How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Thursday here on this program. We've got a lot to get into today. Last night, AW Dynamite. What did you think about the show? We have a new AW TNT champion. Wardlow won the title. Clean in the middle. Foot on the chest is your new TNT champion. And, of course, the main event, John Moxley retained the AW interim title over Brody King. We talk about that show today and also a lot of news. Sasha and Naomi no longer considered active members of the WWE roster. I can't wait to get through that one as quickly as humanly possible and move on. We've got the raw ratings for Monday night, which uh, they were they were bad, but they were great, if that makes sense. If you compare it to a normal raw, that 1.33 million third hour, holy smokes. However, the fact that this show aired on the 4th of July and did the number it did is extremely impressive. So we can tell you about that. WWE Board of Directors had a member resign. Pat McAfee has signed a new deal. We've got a ton of news from New Japan as a result of a press conference that they had a couple of days ago with President Takami Obari. Talked about a number of things, including the return of cheering to New Japan events. However, that will not be happening until in a limited uh, capacity, in fact, September. So no cheering for the G1 this year. But uh, we got that. And, of course, as noted, the full recap of AEW Dynamite. So a lot to get into today. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. You can email me, brian, at wrestlingobserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter, and, of course, F4W Online on Cameo. Have you gotten your Cameo for World Chocolate Day? Well, if not, what are you waiting for? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So I may or may not be on the show tomorrow, everybody. I haven't, I haven't actually 100% figured out. We're going camping this weekend. Camping. And so I'm not sure if we're leaving before or after the show. So it may be me and Mike, or it may just be Mike tomorrow. But you after, just, after I read com- this first story, I may just hand over the reins to Mike. Well, before and you do, you run just, to the woods. You're complaining about the the heat and all that sort of stuff. Is this really what you want to be doing right now? Yeah, I'll be outside. It's not that Fair hot enough. out there. It's hot in this room. Okay. Anyway. Well, First here we story. go. Sasha Banks and Naomi are no longer considered active members of the WWE roster, according to a report from PW Insider. Both have been removed from the company's internal roster listing. Over the last 24 hours, there has been no confirmation that either has been officially released, however. The report continued to say there have been, quote, rumblings. Banks may be doing some signings outside of WWE this fall as well. They walked out May 16th after a disagreement with the company over creative plans. May 20th, SmackDown, it was announced they had been indefinitely suspended. The titles had been vacated. Merchandise was pulled from WWE shop. Last month, it was reported that Banks' lawyers were working on obtaining a release from WWE for their... Client, Andrew Zarian, our own Andrew Zarian, said, I cannot confirm she has been released, but I did hear late last week her attorneys were working on getting this done. So, that's the story. Should I say more, or should I just, should I just do the right thing and just move on, or should I, uh, you know, stir the hornet's nest? Poke it. Poke the bear, Brian. Well, I just was reading like a bunch of stuff on our board, and I was reading a bunch of responses to this on Twitter, and uh, I just couldn't help myself. And I got a question, and it's a serious question. Is there any wrestler who is more idealized in this business than Sasha Banks? I feel like I'm the only person, I shouldn't say the only person, but sometimes I feel like I'm the only person that looks at this in a rational manner. Is that true? No. Okay. Who's, who says, first of all, that you're looking at it in a rational manner? I know you're, I'm looking at it in a rational manner. You're Brian Alvarez. I look at you're everything one, in a rational manner. You are making that claim 
nobody else is for you. But there may be people that say Brian has been rational this whole time about this. People are not going to be rational about things that they love and have a passion for and that they draw a real personal line to, whether it be a musician, a actor, a artist, a film series. I mean, fandom, it's what it is. And I think overall, when it gets to these types of things, that rational Thought and conversation goes out the window sometimes, not by the people that matter, because at the end of the day, you know, lawyers are going to hash this out. Rational people are actually going to hash out in a rational situation or what some may believe is an irrational situation. So it all just depends on your perspective. Nobody is is actually there and involved. Nobody is in these people's heads. So everybody is just taking pieces of a story that we don't even know 100 percent of. We don't know exactly why. Sasha and Naomi are this upset. We don't know why WWE then decided to respond in the way that they did. There's a lot that's still left out there. So people are just taking it and running with it. And if they like Sasha, damn it, WWE screwed her over and that's that. But I think you are the one who has gotten caught up in a lot of this banter and got caught up in a lot of the negative banter initially when the story broke. And again, I I think that may be something to do with it. Depending on no. where you look is going to be some of the reaction that you get. And if you, you're looking at our board and on Twitter, you're kind of going to get what you're going to get. No. You're not. It's not a place built by your own admission for rational, normal conversation. So why would you look our, there our for board a response actually, that matters? Our board, aside from a, a, a few, and it's very obvious who they are if you read the board for you. We have a lot of very rational people on but the But Brian, board. in general, at wrestling boards, and I mean even ours, you're looking at it because you own it. I think other people may look at some of the stuff from the outside or cherry pick for certain things and go, this is not a place for normal, rational okay. conversation either. All right, listen. There are rational people on our board Sure. Who are irrational everywhere. about Sasha Banks. And I, I, have, I cannot figure out why that is. Listen, Sasha Banks is very talented. She would be a great pickup for AEW. Okay? She is not horrible. She is not terrible in the ring. She is also not, I had people saying she'd be like, one of the biggest pickups at AEW ever. What are we talking about here? Listen, if, if they could get Becky Lynch... Okay, that's a huge female pickup for AEW, but they're not going to get Becky Lynch. But why? I, I just I'm moving on. I can't. Are you, I can't are, wait, do are this. you putting Sasha Banks in Becky Lynch's backseat as if Becky Lynch were to walk into AEW, she'd be a gigantic star, whereas Sasha Banks would not? Would I think be? you're forgetting how big an actual star Becky Lynch was. I'm okay? not forgetting an actual that. game changer. An actual not, look. She was at one point. I'm the biggest star they had in the entire company. Biggest star in pro wrestling. Men and argue. women. Absolutely. Yeah, she was you at can, one point that. Now, they've, can, they've totally dropped the ball by turning her heel and doing this character. Now she's just another woman on the roster. But um, we have never, I'm sorry, you can get mad at me, Sasha has never been at that level. Never. Okay? This is not saying she's terrible or she sucks or she wouldn't do good things for AEW. But some of this crazy stuff that I've been seeing, I just I don't get it. I don't know what it is, and it's it's uh, it's weird, and we'll see what happens. Maybe she'll just go into acting. I don't know. I was going to say that might be her best move is to be Mercedes and to take the fame she had of wrestling and run with that for as long as she can as she continues to. I would assume you know stick her tentacles into everything else that is not that has nothing to do with pro wrestling whatsoever. So we'll we'll see what happens here. But uh, you're furiously responding to somebody right now, aren't you? I am. You are. I knew I it. I knew it. I, I mean, there's there's two of them. First was like, you know, the people that said that Sasha is the greatest woman's wrestler who's ever lived. Let, let's not go crazy. OK, yeah. but I didn't even respond to that one. But I did just now. <laughs> but uh, the other one, I, I'm talking about Becky. And, and they said, well, Sasha was never allowed to get to that level. Bro. Do you remember the story of Becky Lynch? They did everything to keep her from getting to that level. And she still did. Because she was that 
Uh, hey, but I got to move on. But you know I have people. To. But no, hold on. We only God. have a minute and a half left to go in this segment anyway. We might as well drag it and beat this to its very depth before the, the segment runs out here. There are people that would say that we've given the opportunity. Sasha walking in could be that Becky type of moment for her. Now, the problem with that is even though there's talent in AEW, I don't know if she can make the type of impact that people really want her to make. I don't think she's going to revolutionize the wrestling world. I don't think really anybody is going to do that walking into AEW. I think we've seen that with, I don't think anybody's going to touch Punk and Danielson right now there. But it, 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 look, I don't know what to tell you. People then will be complaining about, you know, those who complain about everything with Sasha are going to be complaining about everything that happens with her in AEW too. So it could actually just get worse for you if she were to leave WWE and do that. So you better pray she goes to Hollywood where you don't have to review any of these things unless somebody asks you to do it on Patreon or not Patreon. What Patreon, the hell do you have? get out of here. I can't I even look Patreon. at the chat. I'm moving on. Leave me alone. Atlantic Podcast. Liv Morgan. What do you have? Liv Morgan is now Cameo. on Cameo. SmackDown. That's it. If that matters. It doesn't. Which doesn't it doesn't. at all. Yeah. No. Anyway, because she's SmackDown Women's Champion. No. So. It gets Ronda to go home, which probably will be a good thing. We're going to the July 4th Raw ratings when we come back from the break. As noted, if you want to uh, send a text about anything we talk about today, and we got to talk Banks about Dynamite. Did not influence Do not those bring ratings. that name up again, Mike. You're killing the listeners. Well, you here. just said they could text in about anything they want to talk about. Are you sure? No, don't don't Amend text that. Well, you can text whatever you want, but I'm not going to read it. So anyway, back in a moment with more Observer Live. <laughs> Moving on. Hey, how about them raw ratings? How about them? July fourth. Should have set a record low for Raw. Shockingly strong first two hours kept that from happening. But one of the bigger third-hour drops in history took the final number down. Raw beat the Memorial Day Monday number in total viewers. Total viewers beat the July 5th Raw, which was a shock. Ended up doing 1.56 million viewers, 0.37 at 18 to 49. First hour, 1.7 million viewers. Second hour, 1.66 million. Third hour, 1.33 million so yesterday, Dave was talking about that third hour drop, and he said, you know, a lot of people said, well, maybe, uh, you know, people turned it off at 10 because of the, the fireworks. And he said, around here, the fireworks start at 9. Is that true? Because around here, they start at 10. Anyone else? Well, it was, well, it was a Sunday, 9. Yeah, I could, I could actually see 9 o'clock. I could absolutely see that. Yeah, they always start at 10 o'clock. I'm in a resort night. area, so it's it's always late here. Mm. And it's not like it really matters. People just shoot off fireworks all night and all day anyway, because it's what they do. It must depend on where you live. I yes. guess I'm further north, because around here, it's... It... <laughs> Your entire life is a bubble that you... It's hard no. for you to escape out of, isn't no. it? No, you, you don't even get into this, this light What do they do in these thing? other places? It's it's always been 10 o'clock here. Must be because You're going to get into this people. again. Listen. Those people listen, down south. Because I'm further north, yes. the days are longer. Then if you're in Southern California or the middle of California. <laughs> Dude, you we made just a, had solstice you for made the entire fool. planet. I know like you idiot. That, the seven minutes that you get or the 17 minutes, whatever it is. You really bro, think that matters? Bro. Come on. You were made a fool of the last time you did this. No, I was okay? not. Do, I was not. Are you going to tell me that it Are you going to change the narrative around on listen, that one? Because no. I am further north. No. It is light out until 10.15 p.m., okay? In Los Angeles, it is not light until 10.15 p.m., okay? And if you go to Alaska, the days are even longer, and the days so get much shorter. So when do they shorter. shoot them off in Alaska, then? At 3 in the morning? Then? I don't know. Because they may do so 3 in the morning. Longer? All I know is they do 10 o'clock around here because it's not dark till 10.15. It doesn't do you know have anything be... about the Earth Are and the sun? Are you a moron? God. You're a moron. You're a moron in a bubble. No. Since when does it have to be pitch black for you to have fireworks It doesn't have to be kids? pitch black. Exactly. But they so wait they until it gets them. dark around here, which is There's 10, 15. A... Who likes fireworks, Brian? Little kids, 
and a lot of rednecks. But really, little kids love them. So, you know, 9 o'clock DJ, in a lot of places. DJ, it's not the time zone. It's not See, the time zone, go. DJ. It's how far north or south Everybody you are. Everybody else is wrong. Can we get somebody from NOAA or a scientist, somebody on to, to refute your ridiculous statements as if that's the reason why, not local ordinances or other specific civic reasons that maybe the fireworks would be going off a little Thank bit Thank you. Earlier? It's about latitude, Mikey here says. How come nobody gets gets this except me and mikey it's not the time zone it's the latitude mike doesn't know anything about anything do you know the earth is round are you aware of that tell me about longitude brian does longitude have anything to do with this tell me about that no longitude doesn't have anything to do with this because i'm on a lower sea level where i'm at because i'm basically almost below sea level where i'm at would that affect the fireworks or the sun Exactly. Here we go. Finally. Everyone's figuring it out except you. Jesus Pat McAfee Christmas. has signed a multi-year contract extension with WWE. They announced a contract extension on Thursday, noting that the new deal, quote, will see McAfee entertaining the WWE universe for years to come. The exact length of the extension was not disclosed. So he's around for a while. <laughs> he's around till he doesn't want to be anymore. <laughs> well, or until that's, they fire him. That is. I mean, there's I a lot think... of guys there that want to be around longer than they end up being around. I don't think they're going to fire him. I think he'd have to do a whole heck of a lot to be fired right now. With the, uh... In fact, the biggest thing he'd have to do is blow up his national radio show and the amount of attention that he gets for things that he does outside of WWE. That would be the way that they fire him. New Japan also held a presentation and press conference to talk about their business strategy for the remainder of the year. Notable items from the press release. They will return to the U.K. for an unspecified date in October, their first U.K. date since Royal Quest in London. The G1 special show will be an outdoor card held in Rapongi Hills on August 20th. There will be around two mixed tag team matches, mixed tag team matches, at the joint New Japan Stardom event on November 20th, held under traditional mixed tag rules, Men must face men, women must face women. Stardom talent will begin appearing for New Japan Strong in the U.S. It's about time. It's awesome. This uh, this promotion moves glacially. we got to start with New Japan Strong and a dark match at the Tokyo Dome. Well, One of these days, you might get Stardom women on the actual New Japan proper shows culturally it's been a it's it's been tough and i know a lot of people will point to ddt and go well the ddt and, and tokyo joshi pro have done that you're right you're right you're also talking about a country and, and a, a, a a promotion that is heavily steeped in old tradition okay and like brian said they move glacially the country does in some aspects there was a mayor of a city that fell out choking or whatever it was in a box at the grand sumo the big grand sumo tournament that takes place with all that history and tradition and two female nurses went into the box to help try to resuscitate him give him cpr they kicked them out because women should not be in that ring it takes time and this is a big step forward. And I know it's a, people will hear that and blow it off and laugh. And you're right. It's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. But finally, now that it's happening, it's not only great for stardom to be able to mix in with New Japan. And it's able to maybe we have a little less nonsense on these undercards and we get a good, really good women's match instead. I'm all for that. But it's really good for women in this country associated with with AEW or whoever will try to be helping out New Japan strong. Because I, the amount of interplay that you can have there and, and, and figuring things out and, and the amount of connections that can be made, that's going to be huge. And I think that's going to be as valuable as it's going to be as a fan to watch stardom matches and New Japan matches on the same, same show. As a wrestling fan looking towards the future, there's going to be a lot of connections and good things and good training that come out of people working and weaving themselves in and out of New Japan strong. Look what it's done for a lot of the guys. And obviously there are a lot of people that have been looking to break out that New Japan strong has been good for. But look at some of the other names that have been there. Look at some of the ways people have been reinvented themselves like Fred Ross or look at guys who have broken 
broken out of the pack there and become names and, and gotten some buzz on them. So this is great for everybody. Thank God it's finally here and hopefully it continues and really pushes itself in Japan. Also got special sections set up for social distancing, allowing cheering at events starting September 5th and 6th. So not everybody can cheer, only if you're in the special section. 2019's G1 sold 96,000 tickets. After uh, During the pandemic, it dropped to 36,000, which of course isn't fair because they open it up to limited capacity. 2021 G1 also 28,000 limited capacity. This year they've exceeded 30,000. And uh, they have a goal of 50000 for this year. Talked about changing their approach to handling both older and younger talent in response to societal changes. That was a weird line. Well, the company needs to create a path to allow for post-college talent to enter the company. Maybe they can have some NIL deals. <laughs> he said they would like to create a path for older talent to transition to jobs within the office after they retire. Uh, touted Azumi and Starlight Kid from Stardom as being great talent because they started training at a young age. Spoke of wanting to create a way for high school students to begin training in pro wrestling. They should hire me. I could start a YWF over there. Worked out great over here. And uh, they, the need for the company's talent roster to get younger, he says. They have more wrestlers in their 30s and 40s as compared to 10 years ago, which is correct. If you watch the shows, I mean, these matches are great, big main events, but... As we talked about before, bro, I've seen a lot of matches with Okada and Naito. I don't need to see another one for a while. I need something new. Talked about the New Japan Dojo. Wants to run events in Osh. Oh, Osh. Osh. He didn't see anyway. And then uh, Tanahashi will be the face of a new protein line. I'm not going to try. Produced by Bushi Road. It's part of their Well Be Gym franchise he will consult on the brand as well so he'll say whether the protein powder tastes good or bad and if it mixes good in the shaker yeah four horsemen vitamins right there <laughs> oh my Hiromu Tata new series of Bushi Road trading cards Great Okan has new merchandise available designed by Obari's brother not a conflict of interest oh there will be a New Japan music festival at an unspecified date this fall I wonder if Takata Katana Chance and Caden Carter can attend that one. They like these oh, festivals, I hear. Oh God, yeah, shooting whiskey, right? <laughs> and the company has plans to introduce NFTs, although no specifics were announced as to win. Well, at the rate they're going, it'll be about uh, 2082 will be their the new... first NFT. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> the new thing will still be out there. They're about to announce a game to be played on N64, I guess, as well, too, but... Uh... Yeah, you know the societal changes, and now they're looking at young and old wrestlers as an, an, an interesting thing to me. There, and they do need to get younger. And they do need to probably open things up a little bit more. You know, we've worried in the past about some of the classes that they've brought in. You know, one or two guys hit. You know, sometimes that's all you need, but they don't bring in a lot of guys, and they don't take a look at a lot of guys and. I wonder if that changes, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to. New Japan strong and going to look for more outside talent. But interesting to see what they mean when it comes to the, the, the older talent and how they, they work with them. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hey, I just want to uh, give everyone a stat right here. And I'm going to mute Mike, otherwise we're going to be here all day. Today in Bothell, Washington, the sun sets at 9.08 p.m. That's the sunset today, 9.08 p.m., okay? In the same time zone, but just moving south to San Jose, the sun sets at 8.31 p.m., okay? And if you go further north to Los Angeles, which is in the same time zone, but even further south, sunset is at 8.07 p.m. today. Because, in fact, the farther north or south you go will affect what time it gets dark. So, in fact, in Los Angeles, they probably started their fireworks at 8.30 or 9. Whereas in Bothell, we started at 10, because no one's setting off fireworks when the sun's out. Speaking of fireworks, let's talk about dynamite. One day I'll tell you the story about when we used to do 4th of July at Chris Walla's, uh, the field next to his house. Yes, that Chris Walla. And how his father would make a Bucket bomb. Holy smokes. Those were some good days. All right. Did you guys watch this uh, show, Dynamite? Yeah? It was an explosive edition. 
So anyway, it opened up with uh, Wardlow uh, fighting for the TNT title against Scorpio Sky. There's my note. Wardlow beat Scorpio Sky to win the TNT title. They had a bunch of uh, fake, uh, whatever they call them, American Top Team members out there. And uh, Scorpio didn't want him involved, but eventually they got involved. And then they just got destroyed one after the other. But during the distraction, he tried to hit a belt shot on Wardlow. Went for the cover. Wardlow kicked out. And then Wardlow ran him and uh, Dan Lambert together. Hit the Powerbomb Symphony, three straight power bombs, Put the foot on the chest. Pinned him, TNT champion. Huge ovation. Place went crazy. They shot all of the confetti up into the air. Big win for old Wardley. Look, he was about to cry. So he is the new TNT champion. And no MJF. Although they didn't mention his name, but he was nowhere to be seen. Had a great John Moxie promo about the main event. Had a show-long storyline where Mark Sterling and Tony Nese are trying to get people to sign a petition to get Swerve fired from AEW because he kept turning on people in Battle Royals. And apparently he got some signatures. So i got to find out who those people were. We had a Christian Cage and Luchasaurus appearance. Uh, this week's Christian line was about Jeff Hardy, where uh, Matt says he's he's friends with the Jungle Boy, and Christian says, you're not a friend. Me and Luchasaurus were friends. You're starting to make your brother sound like the sober one. And there wasn't a lot of heat for the first part of this promo, but Manny threw that line out, and these people were furious at this guy. And they started all these chants, which I can't say here on the air. And uh, finally, Matt had heard enough about uh, his brother. He tries to attack Christian. Luchasaurus kills him, and they choke slammed him through the timekeeper's table. So it looks like we'll probably get either Luchasaurus or Christian versus Matt Hardy. If we go by the storyline, it should be Luchasaurus because Christian doesn't want to wrestle. He just wants to make money. So we'll see where they go. Clips of the great Matt Menard promo regarding blood and guts. We had uh, Claudio and Jake Hager doing a talking segment backstage. And uh, Jake Hager actually cut a better promo than Claudio, believe it or not. They're going to have a fight next week on Dynamite. And Claudio has vowed to go 3-0 and against Jake Hager. We had Keith Lee and Swerve versus The Butcher and The Blade. This match was an... At- you know, sometimes I go, if they had 100 matches, 99 would be better than this one. Well, with these two teams... I'm pretty sure if they had 1,000 matches, 999 of them would be better than this one. They botched one spot after another. Botch. Why do I hear classical music in my headphones? Classical music? Or is that someone's car alarm? Uh, There's a bunch of sirens going off. I see. Okay. Cops and whatnot. I apologize, everybody. Uh, yeah, they, uh, I mean, just one botch spot after another. And then finally, the last couple of minutes, uh, they did the spot where Keith Lee accidentally hits Swerve and knocks him down. And so you think, oh man, here it comes. And, uh, Butcher and Blade got some near falls. But in fact, Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland wiped him out, got the win. Afterwards, Powerhouse and Ricky Starks came out. And Ricky Starks is doing his best Ric Flair in 1997 impersonation here, maybe 1999. And uh, they talk about being the best tag team in the world. So the Young Bucks come out, and they offer a triple threat match for next week with the titles on the line. The Young Bucks have offered to put the titles up on the line against these guys. And uh, the fans are chanting for FTR. So uh, they definitely got a big match on the horizon. Young Bucks versus FTR for all the titles. But they're going to hold it off for a bit. Eddie Kingston promo. He's talking about uh, how he's vowing to make Chris Jericho bleed. They cut backstage. Jericho's on the Titan Tron, and they slam Kingston's good friend Ruby Soho's hand in the door. She's injured, and Jericho says, you will be next. Dark Order promo. This was just basically a segment to uh, remember the great, the late, great Brody Lee. Evil Uno's out there. John Silver, Alex Reynolds at a J10, negative one. And uh, QT Marshall comes out. He's being a jerk. So they throw him in the ring. They beat him up. And then uh, little Brody grabs a mic and attempts to say, I could pin you right now, QT, but I'm going to wait till I'm 18. And they pointed out that the first guy that Brody Lee beat was QT. And so literally we've got an eight-year storyline to... Negative one turning 18 and beating QT Marshall in his first match. 
At least QT's got a job for the next eight years. We had Roosh versus Penta. Had a pretty good match. There were some uh, there was some sloppiness here. And uh, I always love these Lucha matches where one guy tries to tear the mask off the other guy, but he does too good a job. So, like, poor Penta's mask actually fell off. I need to put it back on. And then he's sitting here, he's trying to tie his mask back on. And uh, every, every spot he does, he has to adjust his mask afterwards. So it was not perfect, but uh, Roosh looked like a star, and Penta's great, and he ended up uh, low-blowing him, tearing the mask off, rolling him up for the win. And they've been doing a lot of mask gripping and everything. And if this were, you know, Mexico, we got mask versus hair with Penta versus Roosh coming up. But I can't fathom that happening anytime soon. So I guess they just wanted to give him a win in an underhanded manner. Then out Samoa Joe, Jay Lethal is official for Death Before Dishonor, ROH television title. We had a segment backstage setting up uh, Orange Cassidy versus Tony Nese for Rampage. If Orange Cassidy wins, he wins. If he loses, he must sign this uh, deal. And according to uh, Sterling, if they have one more signature, then uh, Swerve will be fired. What? Who okayed that? We had the acclaim to the gun club versus Bear, Bear, Leon, Ruffin, and Fuego del Sol. So uh, acclaimed and the gun club had issues the entire match. Finally, when it's over, everybody's mad at each other. The gun club starts beating up the acclaimed. Billy Gunn jumps in. He pulls his sons off. He's trying to play peacemaker, but of course it's a swerve! And he turns on the acclaimed, lays them out. The gun club and the acclaimed have split. Which on one hand sucks, because I loved this unit together. But the acclaimed are... They're baby faces. They're big time baby faces. And I guess they decided to pull the trigger on it and now they can feud. Thunderstorm, which is Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm, beat Nyla Rose and Marina Shafir with a combo Thunder Fire Driver. It was uh, it was all right. I wouldn't say it was great, but uh, some of the stuff was good. It's like, you know, these matches. Sometimes they botch some stuff. Sometimes stuff looks great. It's hit and miss. Kind of like an NXT 2.0 match sometimes. Am I going to get heat for that one? Well, I'm just an honest man. So anyway, baby faces won. Jade Cargill and the baddies are backstage, and Jade's angry about this whole Layla Gray situation. Stokely says, well, since we can have an interim champion, we can have interim baddies. So she's on, she's a probationary, on probation or something like that. So uh, Jade says, you better deliver or you're in trouble. $1,100. Can you believe that they were able to get somebody for so cheap, only $1,100? Yeah, $1,100. Well, you know what? It's old school. If you say you offered her $30,000, the fans are like, ah, this is stupid. But if you offer $1,100, that's believable enough that she'd do the job for that. Uh, we need to get my buddy up here, Fauntleroy, to do these. I'll do that after the break. Then we've got uh, FTR doing a promo. They challenged the Briscoes. Guys, see that FTR Briscoes match? Holy smokes, that match was awesome. Well, they're going to do it again at Death Before Dishonor. Because they're going to try to get some buys for this show. And then the main event, John Moxley, Brody King. A very, very good match. Hard hitting. Beat the hell out of each other. Got to, uh, Brody King got to shine. Uh, no blood. That was interesting. And uh, then at the end, uh, Moxley finally put him in the bulldog choke. Switched to a sleeper. Uh, Brody did the uh, big show mankind spot where he fall backwards and squish the guy. But then Moxley puts it on again. Ref stoppage. And boom, show immediately goes off the air. So no post-match angle or anything like that on TV. And uh, that was a show. Any thoughts, Mike? We don't cut all day. My DVR cut off the end, so I was not able to see the end of the match, even though I actually had it extended out by a couple of minutes. At least I thought I did. You know, it was funny because as the match is going on, the announcers are screaming at us to make sure we set our DVR. It's like, that's not how the DVR works. The DVR works because I'm not watching the show. The DVR works because I left. So they're telling us to set your DVR, set your DVR. And uh, my YouTube TV, it caught it all. Barely, but it got it. But I would bet that, uh, I would bet many people that DVR that didn't get to see the end of the show. With hindsight being 2020, and 
it's all fantasy type of booking here stuff. But ultimately now with the Young Bucks making the challenge last night and them holding the titles, I was thinking, it's like when you and Dave were talking about it this morning, it's like, you know, I wonder if having FTR taking the belts off of Jurassic Express and doing that turn with Christian if it wouldn't have been better with hindsight being 2020 to wait until this moment where Christian, who has been putting these guys in title matches that they felt uncomfortable about and didn't really understand what he was doing, that would have been a perfect way to actually do that match that they're actually doing next week to me. It would have been to do that, have FTR win those belts from Jurassic Express and from Ocon and, you know, have have that whole thing happen. Have them end up with all the belts there, then have Christian turn. I was just kind of thinking if maybe they could have waited a little bit on Christian. But with that said, his promos are the one of the best things on in all of wrestling. He, he's getting, he's saying everything that is the, the cheapest of heat, but it seems to be working for him. And I don't know what it is. I mean, it's almost like you're just waiting for the guy to, whereas it's offensive for somebody else or it would be, you know, low class or whatever. It just seems like it's part of his bit. It's almost like waiting it is on part Don, of his bit. Don Rickles. What to insane do an thing is he going to say this week? Well, that's exactly it. And it's, you know, maybe it'll be some point where it does go too far or it is bad. But for somehow, some way, he's been able to pull it off and we'll see how long they continue to go with it. But him on the mic has been awesome. Absolutely awesome. I think that the reason they didn't do your idea is because they want to do a big match for All Out with all the belts on the line. So, therefore, we have to have two teams splitting the belts up until that point. I presume that's that's the idea here. Unless somebody wants their belt back before September. Hey, after the break, Fauntleroy is all queued up and ready to go. He says he's got the rampage. Not the spoilers, the lineup. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well... Fauntleroy, the floor is yours, my little friend. So here we go. Hello, blokes. Here is your Rampage lineup. Eddie Kingston versus Kanosuke Takashida. Serena Deeb and Mercedes Martinez in action. Jonathan Gresham and Lee Moriarty versus Gates of Agony. Orange Cassidy versus Tony Nice. Talk to you again after a while. Don't be stealing my gimmicks, Fauntleroy. Man. Well, huh. You know what it reminds me of is Oreo. Every time I let anyone else on this show, their head just explodes. Their egos go out of control. That's why I need to limit the number of people I allow on this program. Give someone a hot mic, and next thing you know, they think they're some big shot. <laughs> so funny. Does Fauntleroy, how does Fauntleroy feel about Oreo? I don't know if they've ever met. I've never seen him in the same place at the same time. Hmm. I never thought about that before. But what I have thought about is we got a lot coming up tonight on the Brian and Vinny Show. Only for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. AEW Dynamite NXT 2.0. Vinny's, Vinny's been something else lately. We'll see what he thinks of this Great American Bash show and the number of camera cuts on the show. And Dynamite as well. It's always a fun time. Hour and a half of talking all this stuff. So check it out tonight, WrestlingObserver.com. Mike's probably solo tomorrow. He'll be thrilled to hear that. And uh, and that's it. So thanks, Mike. Callers and listeners. Big Dom. Friends. Followers. Countrymen. Those in the upper and lower latitudes, we'll talk to you again after a while. <laughs>